I've got my buckets and stuff ready for cooking sap. I've got uh, somewhere around 40 gallons ready to go, which is going to end up being about a gallon of actual syrup. Hey, it's David. I think it's a wonderful day to boil some sap, so let's get started. Drop it. We've got everything put back together for our RO machine. We have our white tube and our sap tank. All right, and I'll have to see what these things run back and forth. White tube here in our sap tank. This is sap I go walk up the hill and collect. Um, it's going to come down uh, into our pump. Our pump is rated at up to 100 psi. Goes through what I'm just going to refer to as a pre-filter, getting any large sediment out. Um, after that, I do have a pressure gauge and then the uh, uh, sap, the, you know, collected sap is going to go into the first filter. Um, and the idea is that with the reverse osmosis machine, normally what you're doing is you're keeping the good, clean water and you're discarding the bad water. Well, again, our bad water is concentrated sap. Um, this should get down uh, basically two to one. So what I'm going to do is I then take the clean sap, the, the clean water, and that gets run through this lower tube that basically is just going to exit. The quote unquote dirty water, which is really our more concentrated sap with a little more sugar in it, is going to go through the second filter, the third filter, the fourth filter, and then it ends up coming out or two, which is what we're going to then boil, which is the short one. So this is our concentrated sap tube. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know what I was thinking there, but I clearly had not been using my RO machine since last year. And so I started down the wrong path of explaining it basically backwards. Okay, for a couple of things to remember. Number one is you have your normal collected sap that is going to be stored in some sort of tank. Maybe it's a five gallon bucket or for me, I have a 65 gallon tank that I use to store my sap temporarily as a holding place so that I can run it through my RO filter. That's number one. Number two is RO filters require pressure. If you don't apply pressure, they don't go through the, me it, that your liquid does not be, is not pushed through the membrane. The liquid that does make it through the membrane is clean, clear water known as permeate because it permeates through the membrane. What the other liquid that flows out is concentrated sap. And in this case, our concentrated sap is what we ultimately are going to want to boil. So the way this works is it's going to go get pumped out of my tank through, in my case, this clear white tube. It's going to go through the free filter. Again, yes, I do have a pressure gauge because I do need to monitor it. And this raw sap is going to go into the first filter. Now, if I don't apply any pressure, it literally will just run right out to the next one, the next one, the next one, and come straight out. And this won't, this will be the same amount it sucks in as going out. Okay. But if I apply pressure by turning my little needle um, valve down so that I can prevent the liquid from coming out, it will force what liquid it can through the membrane, which then will exit. And that is clean, clear water. 
okay? This is what we don't want. This is the stuff that has no sugars in it, all right? So that just exit, exits out. You do hold on to that because you want to make sure that you can use that clean, clear water to then flush the system when you're done for the day, all right? So what happens is, is it's flowing through this. When you are increasing the pressure, you're forcing clean, clear water through the membrane and out of the system. And then you're, you know, and I, dirty is not the correct term, but your slightly more concentrated liquid is going to then go into the next filter. And then again, you're going to get some, you know, nice, clean, clear water is going to then exit out and then the next layer and the next layer. So what happens is by the time all is said and done, after flowing through all four of these filters, I'm going to get through the end with the valve, I'm going to get my concentrated sap water. And through the other end, which is basically the stuff that made it through the, the membrane, this is called permeate, and that is going to ultimately be discarded, so to speak, in our case. Now remember, if this was a normal uh, RO machine that you would use, say, for your home drinking water, you would actually be getting rid of the quote-unquote dirty water and keeping the nice clear stuff, all right? But we want that dirty water because it's full of our sugars, and that's what we're going to boil down. If you run your sap through this once, for my configuration, I usually get a, a you know, a, a kind of a two to one ratio. I get one part um, concentrated sugar and I get uh, one part clear water. So I'm basically, I've reduced my liquid by half. If I run it through again, I'm not gonna say you're gonna get half again, half again, half again, but you do actually concentrate it a little bit more each time. I haven't taken the time to do that, but I know people who do do that. You can also buy very expensive RO machines that are actually very high pressure, and they'll get down to like an 8 to 1 ratio. In other words, you can put in 8 gallons and get out 1 gallon of concentrated sap. I put in 1 gallon and I get a half a gallon of concentrated sap. Water, then the sugar, and so that's going to make that work. So here we go. Here's our RO machine running. This is not super fast, people. And I don't think you're going to get like 100 gallons an hour out of this or not. That's not the point of it. So this is just a slow flow. And it's going to take, I don't know what it is. It's like 20 minutes or 30 minutes for a 5-gallon bucket. Um, maybe a little bit slower than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a very fine adjustment. You're not adjusting this quickly because you need it to flow through both um, tubes at a relatively equal rate is the goal. I'm going to increase my pressure to around 100 psi and it's getting there. Pretty close. I got it. And I should be filling my buckets up in a, in a pretty close to a consistent level. Which it's very hard to tell what's going on here, but you know, again, this is just dribbling a little too slow. I can slow that up just a little bit even if I wanted. And this one is coming in. Almost the same speed. So here's my frozen tank. Just popped a little hole in it. And here's the RO. Got the pump on the left. There's my pressure gauge. Right at about 100 psi. Pretty darn close. Alright, heading back down the hill. So we can see how our sap's doing. Hi, Blue Man. So we're running just below 100 psi, and it's pretty hard to tell how much liquid's in there, but a couple inches, 
couple extra inches, which means I need to slow this one down a little bit. So again, all I'm going to do is tighten that up just a little bit, just a hair. Get it to flow slower. I'll put a little more filter water in the red bucket and should have a little better concentration in our white bucket of satin. Louie, you come to help, huh? Yeah, you remember the bolt. You want to go put the ducks up? All right, let's go put the ducks up. Are you going to be happy over here now? They may not want to even go in there. Well, there you go. The nice thing about ducks, you can hurt them. Okay, you guys. Good night.